Kabbalah for Complete Life Management Chapter 9 Rabbi Mikhail Ben Pesach Portnar Wholeness is in your heart. As long as people are living on earth, they are looking for wholeness. They go to holy places, and there is such a place. It is within your heart. There we can find the holy temple. The most perfect place is within your heart. But one still looks for this place outside of oneself. He thinks he will find love in Rome, Lourdes, or Tibet, and or at the Wall of Mercy in Jerusalem. But it is the same as eating cookies. After an hour, you're hungry again. So grow up. Become an adult in your inner. Don't think a physical place can bring wholeness. It is the opposite. It is us who dedicate the place. The temple of the outer being had been destroyed by the higher strength himself. First, the Babylonians and later the Romans, who finished the job. It is a holy place where the, the temple is, but when we are not corrected, we will only feel emotions. There is a principle. Nothing comes from above if we haven't first evoked it here below. So don't wait. In holy places, we feel joy because our ego is quieted. There is so much power from the good that the evil becomes invisible. What we experience is our inner, and we project it on ourselves. The good is in the good in us arises, and what isn't corrected shelters for a moment, but it hasn't been done through our inner effort. So when we are in the holy places, we have to be very careful. <clears throat> Holiness and evil are going hand in hand. Mercy and severity are both strengths structurally present in the universe. Mercy alone doesn't exist, but you experience otherwise when you are in a holy place. It is the inner being that is experiencing this. When you experience is this, what you experience is a story that has been told to you. This is the reason why the higher strength has demolished his own temple so we could make a place within ourselves, the temple of our heart. There were four conquerors of the temple, the Babylonians, the Persian, the Greek, the Romans. The Greek invasion brought statues in the temple. Others had brought pigs. We're only talking about qualities. Only when there is a strong desire for liberation, we can experience the eternal. These are the counterparts of the four treaties in every being. Against the treaty of the eye, we see the evil eye. Against the tongue that praises and brings honor, we see the evil tongue. Every person who is working on himself has to conquer these four points, misleading in every situation. Drawing 11. The world, the human being. Right side, mercy and willingness. Left side, justice, severity. And the middle line. Formula of the perfect temple. The personal perfect temple within the inner being. Please review the written material for the formula. The perfect temple of the whole humanity. Again, please review the written material for the formula. All that we're looking, all that we're doing is to make corrections to build up the temple. For the personal temple that is within your heart is the holiest place of your, of your inner being. With every correction, you are being, or you are building up the temple of your heart. In the smallest detail, we see the light of the universe. The temple only means to be whole within your heart meaning you experience all the ten fields of strength in every facet. All your strength and power has to be directed to this goal. Serve your own personal correction, and at the same time you will serve the whole. In the right, we see mercy and love. In the left, there is justice and severity. When you return from a holy place, you feel demolished. Everyone wanted to be good. The positive powers were so strong, and it was like, you got a gigantic injection, but in reality, this is not who you are. It wasn't your reward. When you're at home and the power is gone, you see how ugly your self-love really is. So be careful. Of course, there was love, but with this love, your ego was growing also. You felt yourself immensely protected. Once at home, the light had left you. Your ego, your self-love was connected with the love, but the love for yourself wants to destroy the true I am, wants you to make a mistake. Only the light can make the middle line.
life is too short for comedy. Either your effort is 100% or you stay in the stage of comedy. Your ego can only live by your delusions. It only uses your lo- your lofty powers for its own sake. On the other hand, if you really are not going to pay attention to the needs of self-love, how can you get out of its spark of light? Who's talking Who's talking in me, the self-love or the true I am? A fruit tree can carry a lot of unripe fruits, but the farmer picks and counts only the fruits that have ripened. The ones that are unripe, he doesn't notice. It is the same with us. The spirit of the mass doesn't count. The unripe fruit is sour, we can't eat it. But everyone wants to be counted, and eventually everyone will be counted. As a rule of thumb, when someone invites you to reach the precious inside of you, for example, to overcome self-love without any effort, be sure it is fake. There has to be effort, and there has to be awareness in what you think and feel, and that is very strong in you. Habits are a trap. Feelings are a part of you. They are coming and going. Be careful with them. They may not take your dependent. When you make efforts, the strength of the effort will make carvings inside of you, and through this it is easier for the light of correction to come within you and wake up the hidden sparks inside of you. The evil in you is only three, is only there because of your dwellings. When you are focused and alert, you will be protected inch by inch. What comes in your mind is as rough a material. You have to live in the now. Every day there has to be the question of, who is talking to me? Is it my self-love or my true I am? In a way, you're polishing yourself, like a diamond polisher who polished a diamond. What you're doing is to pull up the best of you. All the corrections are based on the laws of the universe. Your question has to come from deep, from a deep need, from deep despair. Because when there's despair, the solution is near. Don't run away. So what to do? You need strength to overcome the shortness in your struggle to overcome your self-love. First, you have to learn not to dwell. Then you have to learn to do the right thing. So at the end you can say, yes, I have overcome. And this is for everyone possible. Self-love is the brick for every human being and is always in need of strength. It gets its power out of the strength for the good. Be alive through good. When someone has mercy, his love, his self-love flees away. Self-love means receiving for oneself. It is an egoistic form of receiving, coming from the unclean powers. Where is shortness? Be sure the unclean powers are there too. Shortness is the experience of less than ten fields of strength. Everything consists of ten fields of strength. But not everyone can observe them. Some observe three fields of strength, and others five. We always can correct this inner blindness. There is nothing wrong to be at first blind, because then there is a longing to see and the appreciation of the light. No, before we can see the shining, there was first darkness. We have to bring everything to completeness, not 50-50. There has to be an effort of 100% for the correction of the self-love in the aspect of the giving, and only then we can grow up. There are only two strengths in the universe, the right and the left strength. These two strengths are always there. The middle line is a combination of these two strengths and arises when there has been a correction. It is not a third strength. Only in the lowest part of a person we see the ego. This is the uncorrected part of the wish to receive. It is a mix of unclean powers. When there is severity, it is a severity of the law. A person who is corrected can justify everything in this world. He can see the outcome of the ten fields of strength, and he sees everything as absolute good, even the, even the control system of the universe. But first he experiences the severe master. When you, can correct my, when you can correct yourself, the same severity becomes mercy in your awareness. When you persist and all the sparkles of good are, are in the top of you, you go beyond severity and you experience only mercy. But of course there is severity in the background. The light and the whole control system will be experienced as mercy through our corrections. It is possible to experience the inner world of wholeness if we realize 
with the right intention and surrendering, and not only with the simple deed of our hands and feet, our corrections. In a way, the world has, has to become a better place for every day. And it is for you to experience this. It doesn't matter if you feel the world as good or bad. It is only a moment or momentum in your correction process. When you see or feel the world has become worse, you still have shortness. Then you're attached to your self-love, to severity. Once corrected, all the laws are in you, and you are a physical outcome of the law. The laws won't be necessary anymore. They are carved within the inner being. Each moment we can learn the laws and experience them in four levels. These four levels are in agreement with the four layers of the four commandments. What are the, what are the qualities around the eyes? Here the person experiences the evil for 90%, and the other 10% is good for him. Of course, considering the four commandments, this only means he has the strength to live only according to the commandment of the eyes. The, others, the other commandments are hidden for him. When a person only has the layer of the eyes, he feels life is something evil. But a person who has the inner strength to live according to the next commandment, the commandment of the mouth, he experiences his inner for 50% as severity, the evil, and for 50% as mercy, the good. Everything is within us. Inside of us lies the ability to see the world as a whole. Perfect. To become aware is to learn the codes and the laws of the universe. When you're capable to live according to the commandment of the heart, you feel the world as 90% good and 10% bad. And when you reach the area of the field of strength, named base, where the genitals lie, and you bring yourself in agreement with the light, you become attached in an optimum condition with the laws of the universe. Further and further goes the process of correcting till the moment all the self-love is corrected in goodness. But there isn't the possibility for 100% correction because the finishing touch will come after the Gemar Hatikun, the ultimate correction for whole, for whole mankind. In this, you will come to the understanding we are all connected with each other and our common fulfillment depends on the complete correction of every human being individually. And when my personal ultimate correction has happened, the bad will be transformed in a transparent good, and I will be, in truth, a free person. Everything has been done. The task has been completed. Remember, the sun is always shining behind the clouds. He who makes himself small will see the light. How can there be an agreement with the light when you only receive light, when you only receive while the light is give, is the giving. Only when you transform your egoistic nature, then there will be no reason for the light to be separated. Then you will be worthy to receive the light with the intention to give. But he who is still in the area of his self-love has no chance to come to fulfillment and to come nearer to the light or to go away further and further from the light depends on only from his pride. When he, when he overcomes his pride, he will come closer to his ultimate goal. It depends only from the person if he comes to agreement with the light. He has to uplift the laws and make himself small from within. The more you make yourself small, considering the true reality, of course, the closer you will come to your goal. This doesn't mean to humiliate yourself to others. It is an inner movement. When there is someone who tries to humiliate you, you have to make yourself small from within. Remember, only from the outside your feeling of self-confidence can be touched, never from the inside. Only a human being can give others the feeling of confidence or the feeling of humiliation, but it is all from the outside. The light brings us in a low situation, so now we feel ashamed. But it is on purpose. Why? Now the light wants to guard us from too much arrogance and helps us with liberation. Always talk with a soft voice. This will guard you from anger because anger brings people to the state of egoistic receiving. When you have liberated yourself from anger, you will feel mercy and servitude in your heart. And this is the finest quality you can have.
Through servitude, you will come to alertness. Now you will always think about the questions. Where do I come from? And where am I going to? During your life, you are like a worm, just as when you are dead. But, but when you think about these things, you will become happier and you will be satisfied in everything that is happening. When there is an inner modesty considering everyone, eventually the light will shine upon you. This gives you the feeling that you have come to realization. In a way, it is true. Why should you be proud? Because of your richness? A person is being made rich or poor. Does he have the, certain, the certainty he always stays rich? Is it because of his honor? It doesn't belong to him. He only receives it. And the honor he feels is very thin. There are so many examples of the destroying honor in the world. So how can he stand upon his honor that doesn't belong to him? And he who is proud because he has so much wisdom, let him look to the wise men of the past. How many wise men were there eventually? They have got an illness like dementia or another way their wisdom was taken away. What was left of their wisdom? So always make yourself small and let the light raise you up. Always clear your mind and think about what you're going to do or say. Let yourself not be dazzled. This is the time to become conscious. If there is someone who says he has seen the light, then immediately ask, what was your merit? All the meaning of life is to take fate in your hands, and this won't happen when there is spontaneously a flash of light that overwhelms us or controls us. We have to have a desire to take in as much as possible, and when we don't have enough strength, then inch by inch. The problem is, light always and constantly wants to penetrate us, both from the inside and from the outside. Even the light we already have taken in has in a way no limit. It is difficult to, set, to stay self-controlled and with limits, certainly when you have tasted the light pleasure. Inside of us, we feel an enormous pressure, stronger than the pressure we have, and it pours out entirely. The light enters the head, and from there, the field of strength enters the mouth. It is the same with the physical mouth, where we take in the food and drink. Physical food is also light. It is digested and brought in higher compartments. When we don't need, will be expelled. It is the same with the inner process. The light enters through the mouth to the next field of strength, the navel. The light pushes from the inside and from the outside. At a certain moment it is unbearable and it will be poured out. But the remainder of the light will stay forever. This is why we want to receive more and more. Being great in a lower position and being small in a higher position. At first a person can't distinguish what is higher and what is a lower position in his inner being. Suddenly he can make a jump and arrives in a higher position, but the experience is otherwise. It seems a lower step. Within a higher step there is the feeling of being small, and when you are in a lower step you feel huge. This is a fact. Always remember, when you feel small it is impossible, or sorry, when you feel small it is possible you have arrived on a higher level. People know when you have become higher because you have risen in quality of your inner strength. What is guilt? Never feel guilty. It doesn't matter what the subject or object is. It is forced upon us from a historical point of view. Although you may have dwelled a lot, it is not given in the structure of the human being to feel guilty. It is not your inner saying, apologies, but your self-love. Your self-love wants to feel good. Of course, you may, you may have some regret, but only because you have missed a chance to correct something in your life. Let this moment not go by, but feel it deep inside you. Be aware of it, so the next time you won't forget. To feel guilty is only a waste of time. When you make excuses, remember, mostly they are a product of your selective feelings. You can't apologize for what you have done yesterday, because today you are another person. There is no need to feel guilty about something that happened years ago. We already have eaten the fruit.